What's going on guys? So today we're gonna to be talking about Vietnam Zippos. That's right, broke out my book called Vietnam Zippos by uh, Sherry Buchanan. Um, and we have a possible Vietnam Zippo here. All right, what do you guys think of this thing? Take a good look at that. And take a look at the back. Take a look at the bottom. What do you think? Well, some of you might think it's pretty cool. And I do think it's cool, um, but it's not real. So today's video is gonna be talking about why this is not real. I'm gonna compare it to a Vietnam Zippo that I do have uh, in the collection. We're gonna look at the book real quick. And I'm gonna tell you a story. So let's start there, the story of this lighter. So I had someone uh, contact me, said, hey, I have uh, this lighter here. Looks like a Vietnam era Zippo. Just wanna get your opinion on it. I took a look at some of the pictures and uh, I let them know that I thought it was a fake, that it was counterfeit. There's a couple obvious things that stood out to me as to why I thought it was a counterfeit. Uh, and they said, okay, you know, it's a bummer, but thanks for letting me know and everything. I said, well, I'm still interested in it. Uh, mostly, literally to make this video. I mean, I like having counterfeits in my collection for, for uh, Zippos because they're always great teaching tools. When I'm you know, talking about Zippos, getting excited about it, I like to go reference books and reference some of the fake ones I have and, and show people, you know, to kind of explain, hey, here's something to look for. And I love making these videos because it may prevent someone else from accidentally buying something fake that they thought was real. So the person said, oh, maybe, maybe we'll, you know, trade for something. I gave them a long list of stuff and they respectfully said, hey, I don't see anything I'm interested in, um, you know, but I'll sell it. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, you know, I really wanted to trade it, but they didn't want anything, so I bought it. I bought it. So here it is. Um, and uh, I literally bought this for this video. So hopefully it helps some of you guys out. Now, this one here is a pretty decent fake. It's not a great fake. The thing with, with Vietnam fake Zippos, and if you don't know, the most faked Zippo out there, because there's many Zippos that are worth money, and anything that's worth money in this world is faked, okay? Some con artists out there, or dozens or hundreds of people, in this case, there's literally hundreds of people making counterfeit Zippos to try to make money. Uh, you know, that's what people do. They, they fake things that are valuable, right? We have fake Rolex watches, we have fake money, we have fake Zippos, I mean, you name it. There's anything that people are interested in that has value, people are making fakes. But Vietnam era Zippos are the number one most faked Zippo out there, okay? Because they have more value. They can be worth anywhere from $100 to $300 to $1,000. It really just depends on the collector that's looking at it, you know, how rare it is, uh, its condition, of course. You know, if there's a story behind it, that obviously increases its value. If you can document it with a specific soldier, that's even more valuable. If you have a picture of, let's say, a Vietnam soldier with his buddies and he's got a Zippo in his helmet and it's a really good quality picture and you can, you know, prove that the Zippo you have was that guy's, you know, Zippo in the picture. I mean, that's, that's gold to a collector. They want that. They want to know that that served in Vietnam, which is obviously a huge part of world history and definitely American history and Vietnam history, obviously. Uh, so yeah, the collectors go wild for these things. I'm a collector of Zippos. I love Vietnam era Zippos, but I don't focus on them. In fact, in Zippos in general, I haven't focused on hardcore or spent any decent amount of money in probably years. Uh, back when I was, I don't know, late teenager, I was really focused on Zippos and I was really, really uh, into specific Zippos. And Vietnam era Zippos was one of those uh, topics or subjects that was really fascinating to me. I thought they were super cool and I got really into it. It's been years since I even broke out this book. But, um, but yeah, we're gonna talk about it here today. All right, so before I get into all the details of this lighter, uh, I just wanna talk about this book real quick, okay? So this Vietnam Zippo book is fantastic if you collect Vietnam era Zippos or if you're interested in collecting them. The one thing this book does really, really well is explain all the different images, explains the slogans, the logos. There's, there's such a wealth of information in this book but it will not tell you is how to spot a fake, okay? You can use the information in here to determine whether a Zippo is real or not. Uh, and this has plenty of awesome pictures and stuff. Uh, and everyone obviously in this book is genuine, it's real. Now, of course, in the beginning, it gives you the timeline of the actual war, which you can use that information to determine whether your, your Zippo may or may not have been in the war. 
but there's great examples of real Vietnam era Zippos as well as their markings. And I think the biggest uh, wealth of information in here is the slogans that are on the Zippos and what they mean. Now this is highly offensive. This whole book is offensive. There's racism in it and sexism and uh, there's a lot of sexuality on a lot of these designs. So I'm gonna do a real quick flip like that. <laughs> but uh, I'm just saying like this book is not, it's not meant to teach you how to spot a fake. Okay, there's some websites and collectively you can find information on how to spot fakes like this video, for example. Uh, but this book does not do that. You can use this as a reference. Okay, if you're looking for specific slogans, you're looking for specific uh, battalions and units and stuff, if you want to see what the real Vietnam era Zippos look like, this is the book for you. For example, you can see the slogan that's on here on the back is war is hell, but actual combat is a son of a bitch. All right, you can see that's on the back. This is actually a genuine slogan. And oftentimes on these fake Zippos, they will use genuine slogans. All right, so on page I think 168, 169, actually it starts here, 167. These are all real slogans that are on Vietnam era Zippos. All right, you can pause the screen there. Pause it. Well, you can pause it anywhere there to read those if you want. And anywhere here. But if you look towards the bottom, where is it? No, in the middle. War is hell, but actual combat is a son of a bitch. So it's right here. So you say, wow, it has to be real. It was in the Vietnam Zippo book. Well, no. Whoever made this one copied a real design. So that's a known slogan, but this is still a fake Zippo. All right, so let's get the book out of the way here. Let's get this other one in the foreground, or background rather. I guess this is the foreground, that's the background. All right, so before we get into the details of this one, I just want to mention that when you're talking about Vietnam era Zippos, the counterfeit ones, there's such an array of different levels of quality, okay? What I mean by that is that all the way here at the bottom, you look at it and five seconds later, yeah, that's definitely fake. It's not even close, totally fake, all right? And then all the way over here on the other side is it's so real looking, it's so well done as a counterfeit that people have them in their collections that know about these lighters and they still have fakes because they think they're real. That's how good they are. There are some counterfeits that are extremely convincing, even to a collector and someone knows who, you know, what they're looking at, all right? Uh, many of them are down here, luckily. Luckily for you and me, most of them, there's things you can spot and go, okay, yeah, that's a fake. And that's what happened with this one, all right? But just understand that you have, uh, all the way in the bottom, you have lighters that are trying to be or pretending to be Vietnam era Zippos and they're not even real Zippo lighters. That's the most obvious thing. It knocks it out of the park real quick. So right away, you're like, it's not even a real Zippo. All right, never mind a Vietnam era Zippo. And then over here, with some of the best ones, they're actual 1955 to 1975 Zippos. That's the era of the Vietnam War. So they could have been there. They're real Zippos. It's just people counterfeited the markings on them. So they'll take a genuine Zippo from the era during the Vietnam War, but then later or recently, put fake markings to make it seem like a soldier had it through the war. And that makes it collectible. That raises its value right away. Those, some of the best fakes are genuine Vietnam era Zippos, but the markings on them are fake. All right, so upon first inspection, it might look totally fine, okay? Remember, we're zoomed in with a camera. If you just use your regular eyes and just look at the bottom real quick, it would look fine to most people. But when you really kind of scrutinize things, that's when you realize that it's wrong. It's just wrong. So the bottom of every Zippo is stamped, okay? It is not engraved by hand. Uh, it is not inconsistent. It is literally a stamp and extremely consistent. So on this particular uh, lighter, the Zippo logo upon quick inspection looks fine. It is cursive style, which is what you'd have during the Vietnam era, all right? The Bradford and the PA also look like they're stamped. But to me, these three lines and these three lines, they look like they were done after the stamping. And I say that because the lines are inconsistent. They're not the same length. The third one in on the left here looks shorter than the other two, all right? And they're not perfectly in a row either, all right? So those like, look like they were done after the fact to me. Now, three on the left, three on the right, totally uh, vertical lines there would indicate it was from 1968, which would be fine uh, in this particular case because the date on the front is 1972, 1973. So the claim here is that the person who owned this served from 72 to 73 in Phu Cat, Vietnam. All right, so realistically using logic, they could have bought this lighter in 1968 and then had it in service. Not every Vietnam era Zippos from Vietnam, okay? In fact, there's a handful of lighters out there 
from guys who bought them in World War II and still served in Vietnam. So if you were young in World War II, had a lighter, you know, and then still had that Zippo years later and then served in the Vietnam, those are genuine or can be genuine Zippo lighters from Vietnam that were made way before Vietnam. So just keep that in mind. But anyway, uh, the issue that I have here though, um, just having seen these different fakes before and understanding what to look for, there's a couple things missing. If you look at the Zippo logo here, the O on the Zippo, uh, on the logo, it is completely uh, circular or oval in this case. On a real Zippo, the logo actually, you can see the N's on both sides. All right, so it wouldn't be totally closed. And I'll give you an example of a real one in just a second here. Besides that, on all real Zippos, if you look at the bottom of them, it says Bradford, comma, and then over here, PA, and then there's a period. This is missing the comma and the period. That's not something that would have happened on a genuine Zippo lighter. So here is a real 1968 Zippo, all right, Vietnam era Zippo. And you can hopefully see the difference. Now, the first thing is in the logo. See the O on the top here? See how, like, if you literally wrote this with a pen, you start up top, you can see the end of that. As you loop back around, you can see both ends. All right, does that make sense? The tiny little bulge in the middle and the tiny little bulge on top, those are the open ends if you were to, to write a cursive O like that, imperfectly anyway. All right, you can also see the little swoosh on the Z on top is a little different on this fake one than the real one, it has a longer tail. You can see how consistent these lines are, because again, this was not engraved, this was stamped. And after Bradford, we have the comma, after PA, we have the period. All right, so those are all the indicating factors that right off the bat, I said, all right, this one is definitely fake. So that's where you always start with these Zippos is the bottom stamp, okay? Make sure everything looks legit. Make sure it looks like one stamp and not like it was hand scribed. No Zippo is hand scribed on the bottom, all right? So any weird fonts or things out of place or don't really line up or look funky, it's probably fake, all right? Make sure you're not missing anything. Again, the comma after Bradford, the period after PA, make sure those are there. Sometimes it's literally spelled wrong. These are people that are making these in China and in Vietnam. Uh, they don't speak English. They don't know English words. I've seen these fakes where instead of Bradford, it said Bradport. It was literally a P instead of an F. Make sure it's spelled right. Make sure everything looks legit. Also, make sure that the dates uh, make sense, okay? This is saying that it was in service from 72 to 73. If the bottom stamp said 79, it would be a red flag to me, okay? Because these guys bought Zippos in Vietnam or they brought Zippos from the U.S. They served. They had them marked over there. It would be extremely rare that someone served the Vietnam, then had their old Zippo or even new Zippo that when they got back to the States and then had all this stuff engraved later on. It wouldn't have happened. They had them engraved in Vietnam while they were serving. Okay, so make sure the dates line up. Everything's cool with that. All right, so moving on to the next thing. Once you see that the bottom stamp looks good, now you're going to make sure this is a real Zippo. Okay, so in this case, all these markings are fake. Obviously, it's a fake Zippo. But let's say it is a real Zippo or appears to be a real Zippo. Look at the actual lighter. Now, in pictures, this looked like a Zippo lighter because there was nothing to compare it to. But guess what? As soon as I got it in hand, something fell off. And if you look at this, all right, the real one's on the right. Look how square this is. Look how round this is. All right, even though it's close, it's not the same. It's not the same height. It's not the same shape. Look how squared off the bottom is compared to the real one on the right. All right, this is not a real Zippo lighter at all. It's just a Zippo style lighter. Now, before I even notice the squareness of this lighter, I noticed these two dots here, which seem very out of place to me. These are made from spot welding, okay? So on a real Zippo, all right, we have the hinge piece and the hinge obviously has to connect to the lid and has to connect to the base, okay? So how they do that is they use these tiny little spot welds. Now on a real Zippo, you can look at any of your Zippos. You will see those, but they'll be very faint because they put those spot welds on there before they do the finish on the lighter. In this case, it's a chrome plated lighter. So you have a brass, the actual lighter itself, the case is brass. Then to do the chrome plating, they have to do a thin layer of copper and then they do the chrome on top of that. All right, so by the time they're done with all that process, you'll see these two dots are very faint. All right, when you have a Zippo that's fixed, It'll, they'll, you'll see them better because they'll, they'll spot weld it 
you know, after the fact, obviously. The Zippo's already done, the finish is on it, then they spot weld it. So what you could tell if it's not only real, but you can also tell if the uh, lighter was ever broken, because when they re-spot weld it, it's much more visible. But if you notice, not only is it a, a larger circle here, they're also set apart a lot further. So these very specific indents, it just, it, it's off to me, okay? The actual hinge itself is also a little bit off. Uh, not that it matters that much, but if you look at this, uh, the hinge pieces here, all right, the bottom uh, hinge on a real Zippo has the two. In this case, you could see them because they're a little bit fatter. Might be a little easier to see if I wiggle this. All right, so I open this and wiggle it. You can see what part of those teeth are, are the top. It's the two outside ones and the one in the very middle. And then the bottom are just the other two, okay? On real Zippos, the bottom ones always seem to be just a little bit fatter. It's very, very slight difference, but you could tell the difference. And on this fake one, they're all pretty much the same size, all right? But that's those are like really minute details. The biggest detail is make sure it's the right shape. This is too square. Uh, make sure it's the right size when these are on the table next to each other. The uh, square one is slightly shorter because of the, the shape of it. Uh, but then also these spot welds are just off, all right? So very quickly notice it's not even a real Zippo, let alone one from Vietnam. But let's just assume you look at the bottom. The bottom looks good, looks legit. You look at the, the, the uh, spot welds, you look at the hinge, everything looks legit, looks like a real lighter, and it looks like it's from the real date. Then that's when you start looking at all these um, details, the details of the design, all right? So all the Vietnam era Zippos, they had different slogans. A lot of times they'll have like a map of Vietnam where they serve, there'll be like a little star. Um, there's a lot of cartoon characters. Again, a lot of sexuality, a lot of violence, a lot of slogans. Uh, these are not happy people, okay? If you know anything about Vietnam, uh, most people over there don't wanna be there, okay? So there's a lot of vulgar uh, stuff that was on there. Of course, a lot of them were still patriots. A lot of them were very proud to serve for America, but uh, few and far. Most people were forced to be there. Um, that book is a great reference because again, some of the slogans, it, it makes sense. You understand things that were part of pop culture. You understand some of the slogans, for example. Um, for example, knock, N-O-K. Some of these Vietnam Zippo era, uh, era lighters would say N-O-K. Knock stood for next of kin. So if they died in the war, they'd have like knock and it'd have like maybe a name or something, okay? So the idea is like, hey, give my Zippo or give my stuff to my next of kin. So things like that, you wouldn't just randomly be able to guess, I don't think. Uh, the book is a great reference because it, it, it goes through all those things. So when I see different logos and, and different um, you know designs on these lighters, it makes sense. The story behind it makes sense. So on this particular one, we see Phuket. Now Phuket is the location for a US air base, okay, in Vietnam. So not only are they saying this is from an air base in 72 to 73, the logo here has a cobra snake, right? The snake is in front of a cobra helicopter. All right, I looked this up. This is the Bell AH-1 Huey Cobra, all right? And that helicopter served from 1967 all the way to 2001. So the date, the location, the logo, it all makes sense. It makes sense because it was a ripoff or a direct copy from a real Vietnam era lighter. Sometimes these don't uh, makes sense. Sometimes they're random. Sometimes the the place could be wrong. If you look at some of these locations of Vietnam, don't forget during the Vietnam War, Vietnam, all the, the towns and the cities and stuff, they had certain names, but those names have changed. There are some counterfeits out there that have a modern place in Vietnam, okay, that was not there, was not called that during Vietnam. That would be a red flag if you know your geography very well. I don't. Uh, I don't have the interest to, to learn all that stuff, but that's an interesting little red flag. The dates, of course, can be red flags. Any date that doesn't obviously match up, you know, during Vietnam, that, that would be a stupid mistake, but it's happened. I've seen that on fakes. Um, sometimes if you have a specific uh, battalion or unit logo on there, you can look up that information. You can Google that particular type of unit, when they served, where they served. Make sure all this information is uh, concise. Make sure it all makes sense. It would all be a real thing. You don't want to say, okay, 72, 73, and let's say this was such and such, first airborne or whatever, and, but they didn't serve in that area. Or they didn't serve in 72, 73, they served in 68 or 67. So, you know, once you think the bottom looks real, once you think this is a real Zippo, once you say, yeah, everything looks good, that's when you really, because what's awesome about Vietnam era Zippos is they give you a ton of information. 
And that's when you really start researching all that information and make sure it all lines up. It all makes sense. The right people in the right place at the right time. All right. Now, something else you can look at, too, and this is a great indicator as to whether it's a, a fake or not, is a lot of times these fakes, when they do the engraving, the engraving themselves are either really bright brass because it's new, obviously, they just did it, or more times they'll fill in the engraving with black paint. And that black paint is so that they're hiding the fact that it was just engraved. No Vietnam era Zippo would have black paint in it. Okay, first off, when they were regraving them in Vietnam, not only did they not fill them in, I mean, some of them got filled in, they got sent back home as gifts, but that was extremely rare. But even if they were to fill it in, the high humidity and the temperature and everything in Vietnam, there's no way it would have lasted, okay? And it definitely would have lasted through the war, but it certainly wouldn't last until today. So if you see one today and it has black paint in it, that's a miracle if it's real, a complete miracle. <laughs> so when you look at the real ones, what you find is the engraving themselves, and you have to use jeweler's loops, and you have to really magnify that to look at it, inside would be a, a, a brown color. It's a very specific brown color, which is obviously the tarnished or aged brass that's underneath. Now, in this particular case, this does have some engravings. This says, Sergeant Major Hayes, Officers and Men, PMO, Fort Runamuck, 1968 to 1969. This is a very shallow engraving that's on top of that uh, that chrome plate. So this never penetrated into the brass. This just, I looked under, you know, uh, very, very fine. I think it was like a 30X or something, um, little loop. And it never penetrated the brass, okay? So it's just in the chrome layer. Now it's gonna be hard to tell here. I have the loop up to the camera. But this looked like it was filled in at some point with black. Okay, it's still dark. It doesn't look like it's currently filled in. But it definitely does not look legit. Now, something else to look for is the wear, okay? Because on the fakes, they make fake wear. It's supposed to look old. It's not gonna be all shiny. So they'll use sandpaper. Sometimes they'll use heat or blowtorch. When you see them that they're all copper, that is most likely when they use heat because they're, they're literally melting off that chrome layer that's on the Zippo, but there's that copper layer underneath before you hit the brass, all right? So that's something that it's a huge red flag if it's all, you know, like copper colored. But anyway, this wear that's on here, it doesn't look like legit wear at all. Uh, why, would, why would it wear here and then these two spots? You know what I'm saying? Like just in using it and on the side here, it, I mean, the corners, that makes total sense. When you're holding a Zippo and using it, you'd have a lot of wear right here because what are you doing with a Zippo mostly? You're pushing it with your thumb to open it, right? So the wear makes a difference. Um, also a huge red flag for me the second I open this, when I, you know, even before I notice the square thing, even before I notice the, uh, uh, the hinge, is that this is tight. This feels like a brand new Zippo. This one, not only is the lid loose, but the cam is broken in here, okay? So this doesn't even work, the, uh, you know, to keep it open. So it barely, it barely keeps it shut, and when it's open, it doesn't keep it from shutting. Okay, this is the cam spring is broken, and this is the cam. All right, on this uh, this fake one here, it feels like a brand new lighter out of the box, because guess what? It is a brand new lighter out of the box. It's not a Zippo lighter. It's some Chinese knockoff, but it's brand new. Super, super tight. Not only is that super tight, but the spring here feels brand new. You can hear that, that click. Super, super fresh spring. It would not be a fresh spring. This is supposed to be from what, 1972 to 73? So if this was made in 1972 and immediately engraved, okay, which is the oldest it would be, I suppose. Let's do some simple math here. This was supposed to be made in 1972. Uh, let's see, 100 minus 72 is 28. 28 and it's 2022. So 28 and 22 is 40. It's 50. 50 years old. Does this look 50 years old? You tell me that hinge is brand new? Nah. Not believing it. So something else I noticed too is on the insert. Okay, I'm going to show you this before I even take the insert out. But if you look at the actual wheel, the spark wheel, again, because this is not a real Zippo, look at the difference in pattern. Okay, we have this crisscross pattern on the genuine Zippo. All right, this one's almost seized because it's rusted on the other side. And then here we just have these uh, horizontal lines. Okay, not to mention, you know, just how this, the flint tube is on both of these. You can really scrutinize back and forth. The chimney looks fine. Uh, again, the cams are a little bit different. The can pins, all right? You can get to some pretty extreme detail, but like something like that, like just that the fact this is not even a genuine Zippo wheel. Yeah, obviously it's not gonna be 
a real Vietnam era Zippo. But if we take the insert out, this is going to be hard to tell on the real one because it's old and beat up and scratched. All right, but this is what a real insert looks like, okay? Turn the lighter sideways. You have three lines here and three lines here. For best results, use Zippo, Flints, and Fluid. On the bottom, it says MFG.co, Bradford, Zippo, made in the USA. Okay, those are genuine markings on an insert. The fake one, let's pop this out, which by the way, it's really hard to get out. It's super, super tight. All right. It says, for best results, use Zippo Flints and Fluid. On the bottom it says, Made in Zippo USA. <laughs> so, not only does it not have the right markings, let's come in really close here. If I can get this to focus. You can see this is completely hand done. Try to get the right lighting. All right. So that's a huge red flag, the fact this is all hand done. All right, usually the biggest indicators. So that, I think, is pretty much it. I'm sure there's some other things to point out, but that's plenty of stuff to, to look for when you're looking at your, uh, your Vietnam era Zippos. Um, a real one's gonna cost you. It would be extremely, extremely lucky to find a genuine uh, Vietnam era Zippo lighter for 50 bucks, even 75 or $100, you know? Uh, they get a lot of money. There's a lot of collectors as time goes on it's not like they're making any more Vietnam era Zippos, okay, that, that's come and gone. There's only a limited amount of them. And as more and more people get interested in the hobby and want to start collecting them, the prices just go up and up and up. So not to say it, it's not impossible for you to go to a garage sale and buy someone's grandfather's lighter who served in Vietnam for five bucks. You can absolutely do that. Will that happen? Probably not. If it does happen, you should go out and buy yourself a lottery ticket because you have some pretty interesting luck. Um, but that's pretty much it. Just wanted to, uh, to share this with you guys. Again, just a quick recap. Look at the bottom. If anything looks off, okay, if the logo looks weird. And you can find all the pictures of real ones online. You can do all this kind of research. But start with the bottom, all right? The bottom looks legit. Look at the overall lighter. How's the hinge look, you know? Uh, and this is all from pictures, by the way. If you're you know, buying this from a different person, ask for these pictures. The, the bottom stamp is number one. You have to see the bottom stamp. But if that looks legit, then you start going into these other things. You, you start peeling back the layers, like an onion. Peel back each layer to investigate whether this thing's real or not. And the last layers are really putting all this information together. You don't have to right away start figuring out, okay, is that a real place for this real time or how this battalion? You don't need to know any of that. Right off the bat, just make sure it's a real Zippo. Make sure it's really from that era. And then you can look at the information to see if it was something that you feel like was actually, you know, in Vietnam and served with a soldier. So that's pretty much it for now. Vietnam era Zippos are super cool to collect, but it is the most difficult to collect because most of them are fake. There's so many, literally hundreds and thousands, thousands of these fakes, okay? And people still buy them. Regular Joe Schmoes just, oh, Zippos are cool. Hey, I look on eBay and they have ones from Vietnam. It's, wow, 75 bucks, but it's worth it. No, you have no idea. <laughs> the collectors are paying serious, serious money for genuine ones, and it's very hard to find them. So there you go, guys. Hopefully this video helped you out just to look for a couple different things here and there if you're interested in uh, collecting Vietnam era Zippos. Uh, knowledge is power. Educate yourself. Um, I don't know any offhand, but there are definitely some websites where people dive into this. There's a French website, and I don't recall what it is offhand, but it's a, a French dude that compiled a lot of information uh, and things to look for. So if you just Google, you know, real Vietnam Zippo versus fake, watch some YouTube videos, um, you know, read articles, go to websites, you know, you can find with all the collector's websites, you can put all the information together and really compile a pretty good checklist to go through uh, to see if, if one's real or not. But unfortunately, you can only do so much with pictures. You know, if you're on eBay and there's four pictures and it's just like these crappy angles and you can't really tell stuff, I mean, it's, it's a world of difference once you get one in hand. Uh, there's been a couple occasions where I was on eBay looking at pictures and stuff and I was really, really close to buying them because I thought, hey, those look genuine. And it wasn't, and that's a red flag too. If you see a seller who's selling, you know, 15 or 20 Vietnam era Zippos, either they're an awesome collector or it's just a counterfeiter that's just flipping fakes, you know, um, and especially the price. Again, you see a seller and they have, you know, 15 or 20 Vietnam era Zippos and they're all 50 bucks or $75. They're, they're not real. They're just not. 
So use a little bit of common sense. Use the uh, acquired knowledge you get from, from looking at these different collectors' websites and reading forums and things like that. Uh, and books. Books are always great for reference. Now something else to point out here is that this is a Vietnam era Zippo, but there's no proof it was in Vietnam. When you have a lot of these markings and stuff like that, that indicates that someone served with it in Vietnam. You know what I'm saying? All I know about this Zippo is that it's the right, it's a real Zippo, first of all. It's the right date. Uh, the date matches the information on the front here, and it's military related. But this guy maybe never went to Vietnam. That's just an assumption. I have no idea. All I know is it was someone in the military during Vietnam. So the likelihood that it was in Vietnam, is it, it, it's there, it's plausible, but there's no proof of it. Uh, lighters like this, the, these original designs that the collectors are really looking for and the ones that are most faked are more obvious that a soldier probably had this shoved inside the band of his hat or in one of his pockets on his BDUs, you know what I'm saying? So that's why people look for ones like these. This one's a little more plain Jane. There's no funny cartoon on it or cool saying really, um, but that's why I got it because it was genuine and not, not as many people cared about it, so I paid a lot less for it. So that's all for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. Let me know down in the comment section, do you collect Vietnam era Zippos? And if you don't, are you going to start because of this video? Because I know it's going to spark some interest for some people out there. Uh, I'm a collector of collections. I love everything. But within a certain hobby, like collecting Zippos in general, I love Zippo lighters. Vietnam era Zippos was such a focus many, many years ago for me. I've accumulated maybe 10 or 15 of them in my lifetime, genuine ones. They're all gone. Except for this one, I think I have another one that's similar to this. It was a, a soldier with the name Smith, so obviously that's my name. So I thought that was pretty cool, and I still have that in my collection somewhere. I wanted to dig it out for this video, but I don't think it's at this location. I keep a lot of my stuff elsewhere besides my house, because I have a tiny little house. But that's unfortunate, because I would love to show in this video. I may or may not have shown that in past videos. I know I had a counterfeit one uh, years and years ago with the Smith name on it as well. Uh, but I have to look through. Sometimes it's even hard for me to find videos. I got over 6,000 videos on YouTube now. <laughs> so, and sometimes some of the old videos, they don't get views anymore. They just delete them. That's a thing, believe it or not. So anyway, that's all. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys have an awesome day. And I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.